Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls in today's video we're going to be working on this 2006 Subaru Outback in today's video boys and girls I'm going to be showing you how to swap out CV shafts on this 2006 Subaru Outback this thing is a single overhead cam automatic all-wheel drive now we have a slight tear on the passenger side and a clamp that's let go and disappeared so this thing's leaking and on the driver's side we also have a cv shaft that is leaking both of them are original equipment which is nice but god do i hate doing cv booths and with the price of these things now and how cheap they are it doesn't even make sense for me to charge the hourly rate and swap out a cv boot so that's why primarily we are replacing these cv shafts whenever replacing cv shafts it's not the hardest thing provided your CV wants to come out relatively easily. This guy here can become C's at which point you will want to pull whatever hair you have off of your head. Now that side there boys and girls. Oh the pleasures of Subaru. Uh, some transmissions I don't know if this one does but some transmissions have a separate piece that goes into the differential so whenever you yank on that thing it will pull that piece out in turn damaging your seal giving you a real headache uh it depends on which transmission i can't remember which one i don't i hope to god this one doesn't have it but i've had that happen to me it's a real pain in the ass anyhow boys and girls on this end here if this wants to get stuck because that c-clip wants to be a pain in the ass you can damage stuff on the transmission when trying to pry it out there are certain transmissions that have parts that want to come out as well which are no fun when this thing is seized in place so take your time with this uh, other than that boys and girls definitely something that you potentially could do in the driveway or on your own as long as you have a good impact gun and a lot of strength and a torque wrench and a bunch of other tools that you will need that I can't remember off the top of my head whether you need or not anyhow boys and girls of course before we get started with today's video boys and girls do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit that notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos as well the other thing we're going to be doing in this video boys and girls because we are touching our CV shafts is swapping out our differential fluid of course this thing has three differentials and two of them need 75w90 so we are going to swap out the differential oil for the front as well as the rear differential anyhow now let's go ahead and get started of course put this thing up in the air if you are doing this job as well as the rear differentials get it up in the air on all four corners and if you're using a jack employ a jack stand get a 19 mil and fire these wheel lug nuts off things getting heavier and heavier now boys and girls recently i picked up this dewalt compact atomic series half inch cordless impact driver and this thing says it makes 450 foot pounds of nut busting torque this guy here is torqued to 160 foot pounds at least it should have been and i'm not going to remove that stake because we're getting rid of that nut so this is going to be a good test for this guy uh also this is a rust belt carb but it has been maintained by me for the last three plus years i think and as you can see i spray the hell out of the hub so i don't know how much rust height is on there but i think it should be a fair bit so get a 32 mil and fire this nut off let's see what this gun can do I mean, that's pretty impressive. That's not bad. So, second step in relation to the job and not the gun, push that guy there, because that determines how fast this job is going to go. Of course, do the other side if you're doing it. Well, boys and girls, there you can see our issue that tissues just won't solve. Second thing we're gonna need to get off is our ball joint castle nut. Now, I'm going to be showing you this side. The reason being is because it is a little bit more of a pain in the ass. As for the shafts, they are exactly the same. There is no difference. So the right is the left and the left is the right. So yeah, that sounded funnier in my head 
than it did coming out. Anyhow, boys and girls, back to the live action instead of my comedy bits. What we're gonna need to do is, of course, separate this bull joint. Uh, this can be a pain in the ass. Make sure that you try your best to get the cotter pin out because if you can't, you'll have to drill it out. Not the end of the world. If you have to drill the thing out, it just makes more work for yourself. Get yourself a needle nose vice grip. What you're gonna do, of course, is bend this guy. Oh yeah, there's no way that shit's coming out. God damn, shit is so rusted. Oh man. Anyhow, boys and girls, the process is you would twist it back and forth like this until it came out, but it's not coming out. And I am reusing these bowl joints. So what I need to do now is try my best to break that sliver of the cotter pin out and hopefully it ends up kind of flush. Now, boys and girls, I'm gonna show you some more crap. So, boys and girls, our cotter pin, luckily, broke off right at the end. So now we can take a 1 8 drill bit and use the castle nut as a bit of a guide to drill that cotter pin out. The good thing is cotter pins are made of usually a not so strong steel, which is great because, yeah, if it was hard like a drill bit, we'd be screwed. That being said, boys and girls, it is imperative that whatever drill bit you use does not break off inside there because if it does, it will ruin whatever little happiness you have left. Oh yeah. Now you only of course have to do this if you are not replacing your bowl joints. If you're reusing them, you gotta make sure that the cotter pin hole is free. If you're not, who gives a shit? Just hammer that guy off. Oh, well, someone didn't twist this enough, so now we've gotta twist it some more. It's late in the day, boys and girls. We're gonna ugga dugga this thing to twist it. Now continue drilling. Oh, of course they put this in the best possible place. Let's see if we can get a little bit more length out of our drill bit before we come into contact with our rotor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, boys and girls, that is how it's done. Now you can hammer off this 19 mil. Get out of the socket, castle nut. Okay. I'm gonna go do the other side. Watch that one come out nice and easily now. Now, boys and girls, there are a couple of different tools usually that you can use. There is a tie rod puller that I like to use that will separate this thing whenever there is a bit more of a control arm there, but there's not really much to grip here. Now, the second type of tool, which is the one that I usually use, is this guy here. The only problem with this guy is it likes to go around the bowl joint. And of course, this one here has a bit of a ridge. So what I wanna do is lubricate that boot so that I don't tear the goddamn thing. And then we're gonna sneak this into place. But in order to sneak it into place, what we need to do is just gently get in between the boot and the control arm with a flat screwdriver, pry it up just a bit. Now there is a ring inside the bowl joint, so you do not Want to push it past that ring? If you do, you can get it back down. But man, oh man, is it a pain in the ass. And just tap it into place. Okay, like so. This essentially is the idea. Unfortunately, I can't get in there because my camera's in the way. So what you gotta do is basically make sure you don't screw up the bowl joint boot, get the thing in there, and then I'll show you how to hammer it off. Now. What you want to do, boys and girls, is essentially have it on there as straight as possible. If it is cocked, it's fine. But whenever trying to crack it loose with your impact, you got to have a good judgment for when it's too tight. Because if it's going to compress the hell out of this here, it's going to damage the thread on your bowl joint. And then you'll end up replacing the bowl joint anyhow. So grab your impact, boys and girls, and you can slowly impact this thing. Well, boys and girls, you can all see how easy that came off. <laughs> I can't say it was the same for the other side. The other side's been a real pain in the ass. It claimed the life of my drill bit, so I don't have a 1.8 cobalt drill bit anymore. And uh, yeah, also took a lot more beating from this. Anyhow. I'll take it, it's wonderful. Now boys and girls, what you're gonna do is get the biggest pry bar that you have. You're gonna come from behind the control arm here and stick the pry bar in to the subframe there. So basically where your caliper is, you're gonna go in at that angle towards that front portion of the subframe. Make sure you get it in there nice and then pry down. 
Once your ball joint is released, pull your spindle and ball joint assembly forward. As long as it's come out, you're good to go. Of course, push your CV out toward the vehicle and you are good to go. That separation there is what we're trying to achieve. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it on the other side. Now as I pry down on this side, boys and girls, you'll see what it is I'm doing to separate it. Always keep your hands clear, because if you don't keep your hands clear, and they end up in the uh, way of the control arm, or the bull joint, or anything in this vicinity, as your pry bar comes out, it will damage your fingers, hands, whatever, and could potentially break bones. Definitely don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Now, boys and girls, we can go back and pull our CV shaft out. Now, what we need to do is completely pull this outer end of the CV shaft out of the spindle. Just like so. Now the key to success here is to not contact your ABS sensor or really damage anything. That's really the key to success. You just don't screw anything up. Now boys and girls, because we are doing our CV shafts, we're gonna have some differential fluid leak out. And there is no point in topping up old fluid. So we are going to swap out our fluid. You will need a T70 Torx bit. This thing here is not a common one, so maybe something you might have to purchase if if you're doing this at home of course not a big deal there's so many tool stores all up, all around the place and tools are relatively cheap nowadays with uh, you know whatever hopefully you get a good one or decent quality one because the worst thing is trying to break loose a fastener and then having a socket break on you and just having your hand bash something bloody knuckles suck anyhow boys and girls once you have your t70 socket get a really really long ratchet because if you use a small one you're gonna Destroy your elbows. Yeah, there we go. Once you crack it loose, just snug it up. If you're like me and forgot your drain pan. With your drain pan, boys and girls, in place. Oh man, I really snug that up, son of a bitch. Oh, did I get it? Yeah, right hand power, baby. Loosen up your drain bolt. Now I learned something today, boys and girls, when checking out the torque specs for this stupid thing. Wow, that is really nice and dirty. I don't think that's ever been changed. It's not a golden brown. That's like a Just a nasty rust colored brown Okay, so we got a copper gasket. So boys and girls what it is I learned today is that if you have an aluminum gasket or a copper gasket There are two different torque settings pretty cool. I didn't know that apparently copper is a lot harder than aluminum Now of course once everything is drained out boys and girls You can go ahead and put your drain plug back in place now boys and girls if you have an aluminum washer or gasket here this here, it would be silver. You would torque this thing to 33 foot pounds or 44 newton meters. Now we have a copper one. So you're gonna have to use a little bit more strength with a copper gasket, and you're going to have to torque this thing to 52 foot pounds or 70 newton meters. I didn't know there was a difference as per the material. Surprising to me. Even more surprising is that the aluminum is actually less tight than the copper. So yeah, I thought that was interesting. Of course, thread it into place and grab your torque wrench. Okay, that's that. The time has come for us to pry out our old CV shafts. It is not the simplest of tasks because you have to be aware of where your pry bar is. As you can see, there is this ribbed area here. This is primarily where you would pry, but these things here will break off quite easily. And this sets the tension on your differential bearings. So you don't want to damage this, crack it in any way or break it because you're going to screw up your transmission which would be a really, really, really bad day at the office. So you're going to look for the beefiest parts. You got this guy here and this guy here. And then what you're going to do is gently pry. You don't want to put too much. Now, it didn't take very much there. And that's exactly what I'm trying to show you. Of course, it's hard to sort of relay through camera. But if you have to really reef on this and you crack this, you are screwed. So be very careful. The reason why I'm showing you on this side is because the catalytic converter is in the way. So 
Yeah, I'll show you how that side looks there. Of course, wheel over your drain bucket just in case there is any residual oil there and then you can slowly pull your CV shaft out. Whenever pulling the CV shaft out, you want to make sure you grab a hole of this cage here. That way, it's not going to hit the seal. So obviously, if you hit the seal, it's going to suck. And slowly pull it out and there we go boys and girls we are good to go of course boys and girls make sure you check the condition of the seal and make sure it's in good condition if it's not these ones here are easy to change the older ones yeah not so much anyhow let's show you the other side boys and girls now on this side here of the transmission boys and girls there is our cv shaft and this is that ring that i was showing you on the other side i am not going to remove the catalytic converter to do this job because i don't need to and i'm not frankly i'm not making any money to do that so that doesn't make any goddamn sense you can if you want it's just more work now same principles applied to this side make sure you find the beefy part of the ring to pry out the cv shaft and do not go crazy on it if you break that ring you're going to cry nice and easy luckily this came out nice and easy now <laughs> Thank God. But uh, if it didn't come out easy, what I would do is rotate the shaft 90 degrees and then try in the same spot again. The same spot meaning the ring. Rotate the shaft 90 degrees in order to get a new spot on the shaft and then pry. But do not pry too hard because if you do, yay yay gonna suck when you crack that tranny now boys and girls whenever replacing your cv shaft it is very important that you inspect the shaft to make sure that you're putting in the correct shaft good place to start is on either end what you want to look at is this crosshatch section here on this particular shaft to compare it to the other shaft Make sure it is the same. As you can see, it appears to be the same. Then do the same thing on this side here. Visually, if it is the same, you should be okay to put it in the car, but better safe than sorry. The ultimate way to figure out whether your shaft is right is to compress the stupid thing like so. Force them down in like that, and then look at the actual full length. You, of course, are out of frame here, but you're going to measure from the bottom to the top of the shaft. Make sure that it is fully compressed. Now, you can see there some of my handiwork, a zip tie to keep some of the grease left in this stupid thing over the winter in it. With regards to your new CV shaft, boys and girls, it is very important because you never know where these things come from and quality isn't always the number one thing on a person's mind. What you want to do is hold the cage here and rotate it left or right to make sure that there is no play. It shouldn't have any play at all if it's a brand new shaft like this one. You also want to make sure that this thing here is kind of stiff, but not overly stiff to the point where you cannot move it. The same goes for this joint here. Checking these simple little things before you place a joint into your vehicle will help you with not pulling that same supposed brand new joint out of your vehicle because you didn't check it that took me all of about a minute so yeah save yourself an hour worth of work and pain by spending a minute to check your shaft <laughs> yeah there's a joke in there somewhere boys and girls anyhow boys and girls that is pretty much it for checking the shaft the most important thing you can do now is before you put it in it should be clean already but double check make sure this end is spick and span and then as for this end here you can put on a little bit of anti-seize or grease in this area. Do not put it in dry because eventually it will rust tight itself in there. And if you have to service anything else that involves you removing this CV shaft from your spindle or the hub, you will cry yourself to sleep. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we'll show you how to put these guys back into the car. Now, boys and girls, when applying the anti-seize, you can put it on a little bit thicker towards the front of the shaft, but don't gob it on towards the back. You don't want it ending up on this flat portion here here of the CV shaft. The reason being is because the anti-seize will end up making its way into your bearing with whatever dust, sand, and crap it retains and that will ruin your bearing. So heed the warning boys and girls. Now let's go ahead and walk over the car and install this thing. Now boys and girls, when installing the CV shaft, you have to be as careful as when you removed it. You don't want to damage your seal. 
because seals have rights and you don't want to hurt them okay they're nice creatures you'll be okay slide it into place line up the splines you should feel a little bit of resistance sometimes you can work it in like this if you can't you're going to grab yourself a mallet or a small metal hammer and just whack away at this thing so grab your mallet boys and girls and then smash on the nose of the cv shaft where your nut will go on to try to keep it as straight as possible When you hear that noise, boys and girls, that is the sound of success. Now, if it is extra stubborn, you can use a metal hammer. Just don't swing as hard as you were swinging with this. Now, I'll show you how and where I was swinging on the other side because, of course, you can't see how I'm going to insert the CV because our wonderful stupid converter is in the way. Of course, grab your CV, boys and girls, and slide it into place. Remember, watch the seal. Make sure you get it in so you can turn the other side of the diff. The spider gear essentially is what you're trying to engage with. Then you're going to grab your hammer. You're going to force your spindle forward like so, trying to get the CV shaft as straight as possible. And then you're going to force the CV shaft with your body weight in towards the transmission and then begin hammering. Oh, I got it in. <laughs> But my thumb was between the caliper and the CV shaft. And that little section of my thumb got squeezed pretty good. So don't do the same thing, boys and girls. Uh, I was trying to pay attention to the placement of the camera and hoping that I could get everything caught on video for you. And yeah, look at that, boys and girls. I'm literally killing myself for YouTube. <laughs> okay, now, boys and girls, go ahead, spin off the nut. Preferably don't drop the nut. What you're gonna do boys and girls is take the spindle and move it outward away from the CV shaft so you can slip the CV shaft in behind it. Like so. And that's that boys and girls. Whatever you do, key to success here, do not hit your ABS sensor. And also do not let your ball joint boot rip on the lower control arm. Those are the keys to success. Now let's go do the other side and then I'll show you how to pop the ball joint back in. Grab your pry bar of course boys and girls. Stick it into the subframe where I showed you in the beginning of the video. Make sure that your spindle is pushed away and then move your ball joint into place. As you pry down on your lower control arm the key is to make sure that your ball joint boot does not rip because if you do rip it it will prematurely fail and that will suck now boys and girls with our ball joint in place what i like to do is just line it up so that if i ever have to drill out the cotter pin again i can go straight at it and i don't have to deal with the same angle that there was there before because that's just stupid anyhow boys and girls once you straighten it up you can then put your castle nut on where did i put the castle nut damn it found it and then just run it up with your ugga dugga gun do not impact it okay when I say don't impact it, I mean specifically don't tighten it up. We're going to torque this thing because we're not hacks. We're going to torque this thing because it is one of the joints that is important to torque. Of course, do the same on the other side. Now, boys and girls, grab your torque wrench and torque this guy to 30 foot-pounds or 40 newton meters. Now, once you've torqued it, if you go past the actual hole, you're going to continue to tighten it. Now, you should only tighten it for another 60 degrees at the maximum. If not, it's too tight and somehow you screwed it up. I don't have any clue how you would do that, but hey, you know. Okay, are we there yet? No. Yes, we are there. Of course, install your cotter pin. Now, boys and girls, if you go past the hole when torquing it, what you want to do is continue tightening this castle nut, but do not exceed 60 degrees. If you do, you've over tightened it and will most likely have this thing catastrophically fail. So yeah, don't do that. Okay, let's go ahead now and torque our nut for our CV shaft. Now, boys and girls, if your CV shaft joint is nice and tight, sometimes it's going to be farther back than you want it because you can't 
catch the threads. Now, obviously, if you've lubricated yours, it's as simple as pushing it forward. Whenever pushing it forward though, make sure you don't collapse the boot by accident. That is something that a lot of folks do. It's a bad thing to do. Take your gun and your 32 mil and just... Now we can grab our torque wrench. Of course, with this being a vented rotor, boys and girls, we can stick our screwdriver in the slotted portion right here. And that way, when we start applying torque to this thing, it'll actually torque without us having to hold it in place or do the barbaric thing and put a pry bar between the two wheel studs. That's never a good thing because with the amount of torque that's needed to actually torque these nuts, you can bend these guys and you don't want that. I'd rather bend a screwdriver than wheel studs and then replace a bearing. Set your torque wrench boys and girls to 162 foot pounds or 220 newton meters it is crucial that you torque these nuts properly because boys and girls if you don't First things first, if it's loose, this thing may potentially come completely apart, which would be a very dangerous situation. And if it is too tight, you will eat the bearing up inside there. So, well, either way, you're screwing the bearing. Anyhow, boys and girls, it is important to get it right, because if you don't, shit breaks. And ain't nobody got time for that. Now, boys and girls, this is a very simple process. It is pretty much self-explanatory. Essentially, we want to collapse this ring here on the nut so that it acts as a safety and the nut won't back out of place that being said boys and girls the easiest way to collapse this thing is to take a flat chisel or a punch like this you're going to use that end of it there just hold it in place you're going to take a decently weighted hammer and then you're going to beat this thing as though it owes you money that's that Keys to success here. Do not bash the centering on the hub here. Do not bash any of your studs. Basically, all you want to hit is this guy here. That is it, boys and girls. Now, we can go ahead and tackle our rear differential. Now, boys and girls, with our rear differential, you will see that it is quite simple. It's not a hard job at all. But what makes it a little bit of a pain in the ass is this stupid Y-pipe and Subaru's decision to go to a dual exhaust although i like my dual exhaust whenever servicing my rear differential it can be a little bit of a pain in the ass because if you get any on the exhaust when you're pulling off the two nuts it will stink for quite a while and it's annoying so just be aware of that whenever you pull these two guys out you want to make sure that you don't get any on the exhaust that being said boys and girls here is a reminder that i am in the rust belt if you don't believe me with the amount of rust that is on the car already anyhow get a long half inch drive ratchet what you're going to do with this ratchet is force it in as much as you can and then holy jesus you're going to attempt to loosen this thing but looks like this might have been put on by the hulk god damn i don't think this has ever been serviced to be honest because i don't see any mushrooming at all now with this guy here we're gonna have to employ the use of a four inch extension because the cross member is in the way and uh yeah so let me go get that extension and the drain bucket with the drain bucket in place get your four inch extension into that top fill plug and then crank it loose oh yeah this shit has never been touched god damn all right well now i'm kind of interested to see Exactly what this fluid looks like. Um, the recommended service interval is unknown to me, but I usually recommend 50,000 or three years. Uh, it used to be two years, but fluids have come a long way and they don't retain as much uh, water as they used to. So I think three years is okay. But the way that I drive, I think it is imperative that I do it at 50,000. So I usually recommend the same to my customers. Of course, it is best that you look at your owner's manual to find that information out. Once she gets loose because it is tapered, you can wind it out by hand. Just make sure that your glove doesn't have any holes. And if you're not wearing gloves because you think it's a man thing, you're an idiot because this oil stinks and it's highly carcinogenic. So don't be a jackass. We're some gloves just to let you know boys and girls this is an lsd diff so make sure you are getting the correct oil for your differential there are two differences between the plugs i will show you them when i clean them up 
and they always need to be clean that's for sure you can't just put them back into the hole without servicing them uh, because the rust will not allow you now we're gonna let this guy drain out and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about with these plugs there is the difference between the two plugs your drain plug is magnetic to grab some of the crap that comes off you should have just a little bit of shimmery mushy stuff that is just filings from your differential but nothing big or chunky if you do that's a bad situation with this guy here it is exactly the same plug just has a magnet now with both plugs you will need to grind down all the rust on this section of the plug here yeah this thing's never been touched before that's for sure wonderful well anyhow boys and girls let's get grinding uh, make sure you get rid of all the rust that way when you are driving this thing back in if you go past that section section there where it's not rotted you don't damage your aluminum housing begin grinding You should end up with a result like this boys and girls now what we need to do is either coat this thing in some silicone or use some teflon tape to make sure we get a good seal oh, oh, oh. it's the sound a seal makes <laughs> so stupid now boys and girls when she is done dripping what you want to do is take your plug with its brand new teflon tape place the drain plug back into the hole tighten it up as much as possible then what you want to do is take your torque wrench set it to 36 foot pounds or 49 newton meters and then obviously torque it yeah it's pretty self-explanatory there now it is dependent upon your differential this one here is an LSD. There are different torque settings for different differentials. So make sure you find out the correct torque setting for your differential. Come on, hurry up and click, man. And that's that. No double checking with this guy here. You just got to make sure you hear that click and then you can go a little bit more and that's it. Now, boys and girls, it is a very, very special time that is upon us. Yes, boys and girls, why that is, is because we have to fill up some fluid. But the manner in which we are going to fill this fluid, boys and girls, will knock some of your socks off and astonish some of you. Some of you may have already been doing this in your own shops, but for most of you guys out there, you will probably be as astonished as I was. I saw this in a TikTok. Yes, TikTok can be useful sometimes. It's not just stuff bouncing around and wearing what can only be described as not enough okay that being said boys and girls i will show you my useful tiktok i found this from an australian chap and i don't remember his name ah uh, damn it i don't know how to i'm not very technologically advanced so i don't know how to search it if i do find it somehow or I come across one of his other videos i will post either his name or a link to his tiktok channel and you can get all kinds of well I can only assume helpful tips if you came up with this. Amazing. Anyhow, boys and girls, let me show you what the contraption is. This is it, boys and girls. Behold, pure genius. I don't know why I didn't think about this before, but this, when I saw it being done, was like a eureka moment when you're like, no, you know, when you feel like Jesus has come down to visit you. This is how I felt when I saw that video. Essentially, this is your output tube. This guy here will go to the differential. And check this out. This guy here is going to get hooked up to your compressor. Now, be very, very careful with the amount of air that you put into the bottle because, boys and girls, obviously you don't want this thing to explode and have oil go all over the place. But what you're going to do is hook your tube into your blower like so and just open fire a little bit. 
and the oil is going into the differential. Oh, it's so wonderful. It's as easy as that. Now I'm going to show you the oil coming out of the differential to prove that it's actually going in. Obviously put your drain bucket underneath boys and girls and have your differential plug on hand so that you can insert it quickly when your differential starts to leak. Check it out mate. Oh yeah. Oh yes. It's the best Australian accent I've got, mate. This is by far the best thing that I've seen because if you've seen my previous contraption, uh, it's quite a bit better than a dual pump, that is, because the dual pump likes to flutter all over the place and it's a real pain in the ass. Even if this takes quite a bit more time, I don't care. It's worth it. My mechanical pump may be quicker, but this is a lot easier and my two hands are free, son. Free! And freedom is priceless, you know what I mean? But what happened to my light? Oh shit, my battery's gonna die. Oh, this really sucks. Oh, fuck. Okay, you know what? Let me go. Oh, look, there we go. It's dripping out. Well, unfortunately, boys and girls, we lost our light. I still have my headlights, so I will illuminate the area for you. And look at that. Is that not brilliant? Look at that. God damn, son. Thread in your fill plug and then torque it to 36 foot-pounds or... 49 newton meters. Okay, boys and girls, I don't know about you, but that is pretty amazing. There is a lot less mess for me to clean up and I am a happy camper. Okay, boys and girls, I'm gonna go ahead now and plug the camera in so I can get some light back for my next shot. Now, boys and girls, it is extremely hard to show you this process on camera for filling up the front differential. Of course, we are looking at underneath the hood of the vehicle, and this is the right side of the vehicle where our intake box is. That little sliver there of yellow is what we need to pull out. That is our differential, or more specifically, our front differential dipstick. When you pull that out, you will need to find a long funnel that will stick out to somewhere about here. So so that you can fill up 1.2 liters of differential fluid. Specifically, the type of gear oil that you'll need is 75W90. It has to be API GL5 specific or compliant, which is pretty much anything now on shelves. Anyhow, boys and girls, good luck finding that thing at a reasonable price with the price of oil today, as well as fuel and diesel prices. That shit is just ridiculous. But anyhow, uh, I'm gonna continue to ramble on because I. I am tired and I really don't want to stick my hands in there because as you can see boys and girls it is not the biggest of spaces so yeah you can of course remove the duct if you need to in order to get your arm in there if need be but shit man I don't want to contribute to more work for myself so I'm going to pull this thing out and then I'll show you the funnel contraption and we'll pour in the 1.2 liters of differential fluid now boys and girls here is a tip if you have a oil container an old one like this with a sort of transparent section so you can see how much oil is in your jug grab it and then fill it with 1.2 liters now in order to fill this thing i have a piece of conduit pipe yes that piece of steel sticking out and there is my funnel that piece of conduit pipe was used for a piece of junk otherwise known as a old school bmw x5 in order to fill up the transmission with some fluid it was a whole different deal boys and girls and yeah the point is boys and girls this piece of conduit pipe has come in very handy for jobs just like this i do have a smaller one but it's currently on vacation somewhere in the shop and i don't want to spend the time to look for it now whenever filling up a differential or a transmission or really any fluid through a small space you need to pour it slowly boys and girls if you pour it fast it will bubble out and spill everywhere which would suck and if you're doing this at home and you have smelt gear oil before before, it does not smell good so nobody wants that shit all over the place just pour your oil into your differential whoa I should take my own advice we almost spilled over there uh. of course when you're pouring make sure that nothing is leaking out of your transmission uh, that will ensure that your conduit pipe is in the place where it needs to be and isn't going to leak everywhere because we're done with leaks on this car boys and girls we want to make sure that's a reference to my head gasket video that hopefully someday i will actually edit and post for you boys and girls at home so you can learn how to do your own of course after seeing it <laughs> 
you'll probably still call me to do it because God, who the hell wants to go through that amount of work? Now, boys and girls, once you have emptied your 1.2 liters of fluid into the funnel, the trick is now, boys and girls, is to let this thing drain so you can go and grab a coffee, which is not what I'm going to do. I am going to let my camera charge because we have very little juice left in this thing and I want to make the ending for this video and go home. I will be back. Now, boys and girls, what I would be telling you, of course, had I not been changing out the rims on this, is while we wait for the fluid to drain from that conduit pipe and funnel into our transmission, I would be telling you to throw on your wheels. Of course, I'm not going to be doing that in this video because I still have to swap over the tires to another set of rims. So, obviously, you're going to be putting your tires on. Make sure you employ the use of some anti-seize on the hub or some white lithium grease. And then, boys and girls, you can go ahead and torque your wheels to 90 foot pounds or 120 newt meters be sure to thread your bolts on by hand and then you can run them up with an impact gun just don't torque them with the impact gun use an actual torque wrench be sure to double check the torque boys and girls after you have torqued your wheel in a star shaped pattern okay boys and girls i will see you back soon of course boys and girls Make sure you double check that you have the right level of fluid in. Wipe off your dipstick. Make sure you insert it all the way. And of course, boys and girls, if you did the job correctly, you should end up with a result like this. As you can see, we are just under the full line, which means we are good to go. When this thing heats up a little bit, it'll go just over the full line, which is perfect. All right, that's that, boys and girls. Let's put this thing back in and... I can go home. Well, boys and girls, that is all she wrote for this one. That is how you do differential oil on your front and rear differential and CV shafts. Hopefully you found this video entertaining as well as informative. Of course, if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. Wow, look at that. I did that. No. Oh, bloopers good job jimmy home time uh i don't remember even if it was a stick shift or, or automatic so this well this is kind of pointless yeah let's start that over again just making sure that thing's sealed because i don't really know what the deal is with this now boys and girls if you why is this thing fucking drifting over Recently, I got some DeWalt Impacts, and this thing is a compact series, an atomic compact series. Uh, what the fuck is this thing again? I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> but it has been maintained for me. So if you pull the clap. If you pull the castle nut off and then separate the joint in order to get this cotter pin hole free of debris, oh, that's a lot of fucking rambling. Make sure whenever sending this, you gotta have grab your bowl joint or. <laughs> Oops, replacement gasket, Papa. Now, of course, once everything has drained out, boys and girls, you can, of course, put your drain nut, drain nut. You're gonna torque this thing to 35, oh no, oops. Now, boys and girls, if you have an aluminum drain plug, this would be silver here. Uh, wait, no, not the drain plug, the gasket. Fucking idiot. That way, it's not allowing. Obviously, check the condition of the seal to make sure that there's no damage and yada, yada, yada. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it sound like I really give a shit. God damn, Jim. Now, let's go over to the car and install this bad boy. <laughs> That's retarded bad boy. What the fuck? Of course. Oh, fuck. Don't hit the camera. And hoping <laughs> that you guys could get everything. That I could get everything. What you're going to do is push or pull your spindle off. What the fuck am I saying? To finish this guy off, bud. Let's see, is it lined up? Oh, yeah. I found this from a Australian, Australian pool boy. This is it, boys and girls. Behold, we are looking here at pure genius. Going in and out of accents, what the fuck? <laughs> now, boys and girls, what we need to do is pull that little... <sighs> You listen, it's 11 o'clock currently. I'm very tired, but I got no choice because I got shit to do. So I got to continue plugging away. So bear with me, boys and girls. Why is there fucking noises still coming from my neighbors? Like, Jesus Christ. Come on, hoist. Cooperate, bro. It's late. Can you just stop making noises right now? I know I got you on the hydraulics, but this is the only height that I can record at. So just shut up for a minute, please. Love you, Hydralis. Now the roof's going. What is going on here tonight? Stop it.
Okay, long enough so that it will protrude and that motherfucker, I will come up there and stomp on the roof. The fucking temperature must be dropping drastically because shit's cracking like my hip. As I was saying, boys and girls, you will... You will. Now I sound Russian or something. Jesus. Ooh, that's not a popular term right now. Oh. <laughs> so you can see how much oil is in your... What is this thing called? The trick is now is to go and grab a coffee or let your camera dry. What? Holy shit, I'm tired. To another pair... What? After you have torqued it in a starship... Fucking... What am I saying? Starship? I gotta move the camera to do this. Damn it. The full line. Which is perfecto. That's gonna sound retarded. <laughs> Home time!